Are you on the hunt for the best solar panel in 2024? I know all these other channels list different panels as the best, but what if I told you that the concept of the best solar panel is just a myth? Stay tuned as we discover the truth about solar panels and explain what best actually means. To make sense of how to define or quantify the best, there are some things we should first cover that will help give you meaning to the numbers we'll be going through. Simply claiming which panels are better or best would be a disservice and a waste of your time. On paper, the best panel has a high wattage, high efficiency, a low temperature coefficient, and a great warranty that includes the product and labor for 25 years with only 8% loss of capacity in those 25 years. Like how LeBron James is the best on paper, but Michael Jordan is actually the GOAT in the real world. So let's break down that paper rating. The panel wattage is like your car's horsepower. Both wattage and horsepower are seen as the potential of your car or solar panel to make output. But don't be fooled by a high wattage panel being great simply because of that wattage. In recent years, solar panel manufacturers have gotten in the habit of merely making solar panels considerably bigger in order to increase their wattage, which really puts a damper on things if you have limited roof space. The next metric we'll cover is efficiency. This metric measures how much sunlight the panel can take in through wattage capacity and ultimately turn into electricity. Unfortunately, this metric is influenced by shade, temperature, roof pitch, your location on earth, and even your choice of where to place the panels. The temperature coefficient represents how well a solar panel can perform in high temperatures. It works like this. For every degree above 25 Celsius, a panel will drop production by the heat coefficient value. While this is an important number, having the lowest temperature coefficient doesn't make a panel better. We'll get into that in a moment. Then there's the warranty matter regarding years covered, what's covered, and what's left at the end of the warranty. Let's start with the years covered. Most warranties offer a 25 year warranty period covering the product against any manufacturer's defects. Some manufacturers include labor and some don't. You'll want to ask for the warranty spec sheet from whoever you're talking to about solar because that's where the devil is. Finally, the production metric at the end of the warranty period. Like I mentioned earlier, some panels only drop by 8% of their capacity in 25 years, while others drop by as much as 15%. The metrics I just covered are often used to determine the best solar panels on the market. But call me a skeptic, because I'll share why that's just a myth. Now hold on, let me explain. The best solar panel is a myth because the best is so damn subjective. I mean, some poor saps still think the Chargers are the best football team. To better make my point, I'll explain why the metrics I mentioned a moment ago should not be used to claim solar panel supremacy. Starting with wattage. Do you remember how I told you that companies are just making solar panels bigger? In 2015, a high wattage panel coming in at 320 watts was 66 inches tall. Now, a 440 watt panel is 82 inches tall. Sure, you have extra watts, but now you need more space for one panel. If your roof has a lot of hips, valleys, or other obstructions, you're going to be playing Tetris like a blind man, and fitting larger panels is going to be tough. Next up is efficiency. I find it funny when people focus on efficiency when the range between an economy panel and the best panels is only about 2%. It's challenging to make a case for anything being quantified in the best category when there's such a minuscule gap in difference. Then we spoke about the temperature coefficient and how lower is better. That's all true. However, the method of installation has a significant influence on this number. Say you install the best panel with a low temperature coefficient, but you install it with a very low profile and skirts all around the panels so they look sleek. Well, 
you just inhibited airflow and those panels will cook on a hot summer's day, which means that the hotter they get, the less efficient they are. Compare that to an economy panel installed on a roof with ample clearance underneath and no obstructions for airflow, which helps keep the panel cooler and more efficient. Now that brings us to warranty. I have to be honest and tell you that warranty claims from panel manufacturers are a crock of <laughs> Yeah, I said it. Let me add insult to injury and look you in the eyes when I say this. Solar panel warranties are simply a marketing gimmick. Here's what no other video says about the warranty and why I believe it's hogwash. Number one, the installer will tell you in the contract that it's your responsibility to alert them of any faults, even when they include monitoring in their agreement with a production guarantee. If the panel isn't performing as it should, it's on you to know about it and alert the installer. Second, even if you notice a fault and bring it to the installer's attention, it's up to them whether or not they'll do anything about it. We've had customers call us to light a fire under their installer because they were being ignored, even when panels performed well below warranty limits. This is because the installer loses money when sending out a technician. Now I know that's not your problem, but it is. It's your problem because the best solar panel warranty is worth less than the Russian ruble if the installer blows you off. Case in point, I started my solar career at a company that has now been in business for over 85 years and seems to have an excellent reputation. And even they have a hard time responding to service calls in a way that makes people feel cared for. So if you think simply because the best solar panel has glowing metrics and you'll be fine, think again. If the best solar panel is all a myth, what should you look out for when buying a solar panel system? Getting the best solar panel on the market has significantly less to do with what's on paper and more to do with you. Yeah, you. But wait a minute, Sinue. I don't make the panels and I don't install them. What factor do I play in the best solar panel equation? Well, sir or madam, metaphorically speaking, you're in the driver's seat. You choose the installer, select a panel and inverter, and own the system. Like my old squad leader in the army used to say, nobody will take better care of you than you. Let me give you an example. I only buy Honda or Toyota because I believe they make the best cars. I think that because they offer excellent warranties, workmanship, and reliability scores. But just because of those qualifiers doesn't mean I can drive it without checking fluids, changing the oil, or even checking my tire pressure regularly. The vehicle's qualities do not absolve me of responsible and active ownership by any means. Otherwise, my beautiful Honda Odyssey, yeah, real men drive minivans, will leave me stranded on the side of the road and the warranty won't be worth a thing. With regards to solar panels, here's what that means. The solar installer doesn't care if your system isn't producing. They already got paid. It's solely up to you to be aware of system performance by being aware if there are any issues, be it from the panels or the inverter. I made a whole video on monitoring here and I really think you should check it out because if it isn't producing the power it should be due to some fault that goes unnoticed, it doesn't matter if you have the best solar panel installed. The lowest cost Chinese made panel that produces electricity is much better than the newest panel suffering some issues that reduce or prevent electricity generation. Then there's your roof in the whole equation. Suppose you have ample space with open access to sunlight. In that case, you may care less about efficiency, wattage, and other metrics if you can make up those losses with additional panels and save yourself several thousand dollars you'd otherwise spend on the best solar panels. This is especially true if you don't think you'll be in the house for 25 years of the solar panel warranty lifetime. And finally, there's the method of buying solar, which I think plays a huge role in getting the best solar panels. If you opt for a solar panel lease that increases 3% per year in cost, and soon you're paying more than you were to the utility, what 
difference does it make if you have the best solar panels now that you're in a worse position? In other words, how you buy your solar panels can make even the economy panels the best panels for you. So, like I mentioned earlier in the video, most of these other YouTube channels are throwing paper metrics at you to make their case, but that's all superficial. Those things don't make for the best solar panels. You do. And you know what? Sometimes the fact is that the best solar panels for you are the ones you don't buy. That's right. Here you have a company that sells solar panels telling you not to buy solar panels. The truth is solar is not for everyone and sometimes you're better off not investing in it. Check out the six reasons why you shouldn't go solar video because perhaps you may be better off keeping that money in your pocket.